So next up, I'm super excited about this one. So I think for anybody that has had to build a product, it doesn't take much or you don't get far in development before you realize that you need authentication. So for our next partner that we have pitching, we have Colin, who is the co-founder of Clerk. Colin, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, All right. I guess I'll jump in here. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Clerk, uh, we like to call ourselves more than authentication, complete user management. And I'm going to uh, jump into a little bit about what that means. Uh, first, a little about me. Um, Co founder of Clerk, a uh, high level is like we build off for React, um, and we currently manage millions and millions of MAUs. Um, uh, I stole this from Jarl earlier in the session. I am here to solve a CEO problem. Um, I actually edited on the fly here, but help, our CEO is getting mad uh, because he said that our login flow is broken, but I swear I've checked it a billion times. Uh, gonna solve it a little less, or a little differently than Jarl. Uh, just use Clerk for authentication and this will go away. But um, more seriously, uh, the way we approach auth and user management at Clerk, um, First, we, we want to unblock authentication ridiculously quickly. Uh, second, we want the UIs we provide to just be UIs that you love, that you're proud of. Um, and same with the user profile, right? We don't just stop at authentication. It is this complete user management. Uh, we really like to think beyond traditional security. Uh, and then we also want to help you with customer support. And I think this is kind of, uh, you know, again, complete user management, and we'll get into what all of this means. Uh, First of all, unblock authentication ridiculously quickly. So um, with Redwood, it's, so this is just the clerk Redwood docs. You go to quick starts, pick Redwood. Um, A few commands, like we should be running within 10 minutes. I think our median uh, is about 13 minutes right now. Um, so it, it really is just ridiculously fast. Uh, we're constantly looking for ways to make it faster. Um, as you can tell by like us measuring it, but, uh, yeah, we really do strive to just make this incredibly easy. Like we don't think authentication is something developers should need to, you know, like stress about. I think there are best practices today and we can kind of just provide those best practices out of the box. Um, kind of match your user's expectations and get you going. Um, all right, number two, uh, authentication UI you love. And so I'm just gonna do a little bit of demoing of our components. Um, so in React, like you can just drop this in as, you know, like open bracket sign in. Um, and yeah, I, I guess to show a couple variants of the experience, uh, I'll show just like logging in to my Gmail. Yeah, so Clerk, I'm logging into clerk.com. We use Clerk ourselves. Um, but I don't have this one saved in one password. So you can see, just, you know, type it in. I'll sign out. Uh, I'll do one of these like forgot password flows. I'll just say, why don't you send me a code? I'll grab that. Getting codes while you're in like do not disturb mode is annoyingly hard. Uh, 272, 228. And so that works. Uh, but then like we've also kind of put a lot of focus on uh, uh, well, actually, no, I meant to show this first. So the other thing is like, you can go in with Gmail as well, um, which like, this is all the same account that I'm logging into. So that account linking automatically works. Um, let's see. Then I wanted to show like the one password experience a little bit. And so I have my column at clerk.dev account saved in one password. Um, and a lot of people complain with like one password about these like multi-step experiences. And so 
when I click that, it's kind of cool that like the password just pops up right away. Um, and then it actually just like flows right through the 2FA step as well. So we're, we're pulling all of that. It's like a tight integration with one password and other password editors or password managers um, to just work. Uh, and I guess one last one I could show. All right, let's do same column at click.dev. Now I have 2FA separately. Uh, so it's like the OAuth is only providing one factor. I still need the second factor. I can autofill this. And now we're through. Um, yeah, so hopefully, like, I, I don't know. Hopefully, you, like, don't want to build all that, <laughs> right? Uh, like, there's there's a ton of work that goes into everything you just saw, um, like verification codes and account linking and working with one password. It's like there's just a lot. Um, and, you know, we just think it's probably not worthwhile to really be spinning your wheels on it. And so our goal is just like, let's try to get this into your app within five minutes and then you can start building. Um, so that's the authentication UI you love. And then there's still like the user profile UI. So I'm signed in here. Um, this, this little component in the upper right, I'm not sure if you can see it like shimmer as I hover over, but that's a nice little touch. Um, this, this is a component, we call it the user button, and it's kind of the waypoint for signing out as well as managing your account. And so people can come in here. This, this user avatar is like, we have something in our dashboard for you to like, set your user avatar colors. Um, so people end up with a nice one by default, but if they want, they can also upload. Um, also, if you sign up originally with Google OAuth or something, it'll pull in that profile picture. Um, you know adding emails, removing emails, setting your password, setting up 2FA, uh, active devices I'm going to get into more a little later, deleting your account. Like all of these things um, are things you'll you'll need to build one day. I think so many developers will approach auth as like, let me just get something that like that gets me over the hurdle of launch. And then they'll just have these like looming list of, of features that they still need to build. Uh, with Clerk, you literally just drop the user button that has a link to the user profile, it opens as a modal, and it's all just here. Um, and it works cooperatively with the sign-in component. So if someone does add 2FA, it's not like there's extra work you need to do to hook it up. You don't need to check, does the user have 2FA? Like all of that's all built in. Um, cool, so that's user profile UI love. Um, beyond traditional security. So this is more just like talking points. Um, traditional security, I think is like really table stakes. So, you know, hopefully, like every auth package you use, they like cache passwords in the database. They're using HTTP only cookies. Uh, that's for like XSS mitigation. Uh, like 2FA should be available. Uh, there should be this recognition that like SMS auth is, is insecure. Like maybe you want to offer it, but um, at, at the very least, like the user should be able to opt into TOTP auth instead. And, um, uh, and so that's that to me is like, okay, like, hey, these have been best practices for you know five years, decades even. Um, and so you should definitely have these. And I think like most auth packages do a, a good to or do a good amount of work to to handle these issues. Um, I think one thing that's been more surprising though is like how many security issues kind of lie beneath the surface, and we've been seeing this. Um, I guess both as we scale, but more importantly, as our customers scale. And so we've needed to build out this like, you know, like strong brute force detection, right? Like the, the same IP shouldn't be, you know, trying hundreds of passwords. Like that's not a user who's forgotten their password. That's a user trying to break in. And so we have that built in. Um, fake account detection. Uh, a lot of AI apps right now are dealing with this issue of, uh, you know, bots trying to spin up thousands and thousands of accounts to, to, steal kind of the free AI compute that they offer. And so we need to protect against that. Uh, SMS pumping detection, again, it's like if you have um, a sign up that does SMS verification in the middle of it, um, there's like certain countries where uh, it's, it's kind of fraud, SMS pumping fraud, where a attacker can like get kickbacks from a telecom company for just getting an SMS sent to them. And so if your sign up form can trigger an SMS to them, they'll try to just, 
you know, generate thousands of accounts, they won't actually complete the sign up. They're just trying to receive the SMS um, for their kickback. Uh, and that's a big headache that we've had to deal with. Um, last is uh, active device management, right? Uh, so I mentioned this briefly, like, I guess I'm only signed in on, on one device right now, but if I signed in on another device, um, it would be listed here and it would also say, you know, sign out. Um, and that's something I think you see in a lot of like mature products, right? Like Google has this, if you go to your Google account, um, but it's something that a lot of, uh, you know, less mature products don't, don't have yet. And I think one of the, the nice advantages of kind of only caring about auth as a company is like, we get to really just dive deep uh, in, in what we provide. All right, uh, help with support. So this is a fun one. I think you know it falls into a complete user management just just because our customers have asked for it. Um, uh, but uh, let me. Oh no, I lost my tab. Which one is it? This one. Okay, so I'm um, I'm signed in right now as like an administrator of Clerk.com. Um, this is a different, this is an incognito window. So it's a separate set of cookies. So over here, I'm signed in. Uh, I guess I'm signed in as Colin at clerk.dev here. Um, here, I'm going to sign in as my Gmail again. But like, let's say, you know, I am this user, I'm having a problem. I, I contact into support. Um, and I'm describing the problem. Uh, and then support like wants to help out, but it would be really helpful if support could kind of see what I'm seeing. And so we have this like administrative function. And so now I'm signed in as an administrator of clerk.com where you can go and I pulled up uh, my, my Gmail account and I can actually go and impersonate myself in this case. And what happens is like, I'm now signed in as my Gmail, but I'm actually an administrator. And so this thing is here. It's just like more or less reminding me like, hey, by the way, you're signed in as, as someone else. Um, and now I can see everything that this user does. I, it's, uh, I mean, it's just proven to be like really helpful for our customers. Um, it's, it's a fun one for us because I think, you know, people think of us as an, as an auth company and this is, the way it's tied in is like session management. Um, like ultimately we're generating a impersonation session for the administrator. Um, and, you know, in the developer's backend, you can detect, Hey, is this an, an impersonator? And so I think we have this set up at clerk. So if someone's impersonating, they can read, but they can't, they can't make any adjustments. Um, and we, we give developers ways to, to set that up so that their support team can see things, but not actually, manipulate anything or they can generate audit logs and so on. So anyway, um, yeah, this, this is a, you know, a fun other way that we kind of think of more than authentication, complete user management. Uh, that's, that's all I got. Um, again, like you can get all of that ridiculously easily, right? Just drop in a couple components, follow that Redwood guide in click.com slash docs. Um, this is my contact information on click.com, teach by Colin. Um, and then on Twitter, we're, we're clerk dev. But that's all I've got. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Colin. I can't believe we're talking about exchanging 13, 10, 13 minutes worth of work for like literally months of work to be able to have the same functionality. It's, I think React is just absolutely wild in how much you can like because we're doing both front end and back end, the amount we can deliver so easily is just it's so cool. It's yeah. totally like components of the new APIs, like this is a whole new world. Awesome. Uh Jayesh, love to hear from you. Sure. Yeah. Colin, thank you for your presentation. I think it was great. I mean, you know, you're making security easy and achievable for millions of users and thousands of, of companies. Uh, I think eight minutes are not enough for what you do. I think there's a lot more. Maybe you can spend maybe 30, 45 seconds because I see you also have like a B2B SaaS component and, you know, yeah. multi-tendency is also something you support. So if you could just shed some light on that, uh, that would be great. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so we have a set of B2B SaaS components that basically if you're building a B2B SaaS, after someone signs up, they need to also sign up their organization and like invite their team members, set people's roles and permissions. We're, I'd say, still in the, the early innings of those components, but um, it, it works very similarly. Like you drop a create organization component and that gives them the UI to, to kick this off. Um, and then they can set up multiple organizations and switch between them. Um, and yeah, I, like that's actually the team I'm uh, like managing right now. Uh, okay. and, and so uh, a very dear and dear problem to me, I think, you know, Clerk, Clerk is also using those components ourselves. And uh, over the coming months, yeah, like that's, there's a tremendous amount of focus there to basically streamline building an entire B2B SaaS. And, and we're thinking about like, how can we pull billing plans into there and uh, just a lot more. Um, and, and so, yeah, we're, we're excited about those. Very cool. Yeah, self-service multi-tenancy is going to be, uh, it's going to be amazing. So looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yoko? Yeah, this is extremely cool. I <laughs> So all of us have tried Clerk hands out, and now we actually picked Clerk as the auth provider for all of the open source stacks that we have been shipping from getting started stack to for AI to like companion stack. What we realized there's one thing that Colin didn't mention that's like a great benefit for us was really the bot detection piece where when we launch these apps, there's so many people just pinging um, like the endpoints when you sign up. And then we definitely see Clark <laughs> kind of keep these fake accounts out. Another really cool thing was um, for other auth providers I have tried, I have to implement like authenticate like phone number based on the user myself, but like for clerks, it was just so easy. So if you're kind of like doing any text-based features, like texting a user, getting a text from a user, it's just um, working to your clerk. So everyone should try it out. That's great. Thank you. Colin, I find this so refreshing. The first uh, Redwood open source contribution that I made was a documentation for auth and I, I invested a month of my life. That is, this is my hobby, not my job. Um, and, and so I know the pain. I know the pain and I want to help folks address it. And I don't, and I was, I've been hacking away developing, say the user experience. I don't want to do it anymore. And so it, you really jive with the red, yeah. the spirit of Redwood, which is to help startups explore more territory faster. And so it's, uh, you're addressing real pain. I know the pain and I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, just we just got to get out of the way and let them build, right? That's the <laughs> mindset. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you again so much, Colin, for pitching today and being part of the Redwood community. Really thank appreciate you. It. Awesome.